Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. So in today's card making video, we're gonna be using another stencil from A Colorful Life Designs with Gilding Flakes. Now this is the Flower Explosion stencil and it's absolutely gorgeous. Of course, there's lots of different techniques that you can use stencils for, but in today's video, we're gonna be using the Tacky When Dry Gel Medium from the Crafters Workshop and Gilding Flakes. So to use this product, you're gonna need a palette knife and I've got the Mega Flake Manchester Tart uh, Gilding Flakes from Indigo Blue. This is a lovely mix of gold, silvers and copper. So it's going to make a really lovely, pretty card. So I'm lining my uh, stencil up on my cardstock and I've already gone ahead and cut a panel of black card to six inches square. I'm using my magnets just to hold it all in place. And then we can go ahead and apply the Tacky When Dry Gel Medium. Now, if you haven't seen this product before, it's very much like their stencil butters, or maybe you're familiar with other brands of stencil paste. So it's very creamy in texture, almost like a thick PVA type glue. So with this, you get volume of a texture paste, but when it dries, it dries tacky. So you can then use it to apply glitter, flakes or foil. So I'm just using my palette knife there just to kind of spread the tacky and dry gel medium over the stencil. I'm having to move my magnets out the way and I do find that once most of the stencil is covered, I don't need the magnets anymore. The weight of the texture paste is holding it in place. So I'm trying to be careful just to brush in one or two directions just so that I don't catch the stencil. I want it to be as smooth as possible because when the um, gel medium dries, it keeps any of those bumps or lumps in it. So you want it to be as smooth as possible. To remove the stencil, you want to grab the bottom left corner and peel it away from you. That way you don't get any kind of peaks uh, from the stencil being pulled off and you get that lovely crisp image. So you can see how that looks there. What I'm going to do is pop it to one side to dry. Just clean my glass mat with some water and some tissue paper. And I'm going to go away and wash my stencil and my palette knife so that it doesn't dry on any of my products. So once the Tacky and Dry Gel Medium is dry, it goes lovely and clear and glossy, as you can see here. Now, I set this aside for about an hour before it was ready to be used for the Gilding Flakes. You can speed it up using a heat tool, but if you want it to stay nice and smooth, it's better just to let it air dry. So I just popped a scrap of copy paper underneath it, and I'm going to go ahead now and use the Gilding Flakes. Now, because there's different colours of Gilding Flakes in this little pot, I really want to get a good variety of the colours across the whole panel. So I'm carefully picking out different um, Gilding Flake colours with my fingers, and then I can just um, attach those to the tacky medium. Of course, you could just use a single colour of Gilding Flakes, for example, gold or silver. But because I've got this um, Gilding Flake part, I really want to use the flakes that I've got today. And I really want that variation of colour across the whole panel. So once you've got a fair few flakes down, use your fingers to just push it into all of the areas that have got the tacky medium. You'll be able to see any areas that you've missed and then you can just keep rubbing um, more flakes over those areas. If you've missed anywhere, the good thing about tacky mediums is that you can come back in and just add a little bit more. The tackiness is not going to go away until it's all coated in gilding flakes or glitter or foil, whatever you're using. So now I'm just coming in with the scoochie foam. This is just an abrasive foam. You can use a paintbrush for this. And all I'm doing is taking off the excess. This kind of really burnishes the gilding flakes into the tacky medium. And it really brings out all the lovely detail from that stencil. So once I've got as much of as possible, I'm just going over it with a paintbrush, just in some of the finer gaps, just to kind of make sure that I've got off all of the loose flakes. And then we've got our lovely finished panel. So as you can see, I'm just wiping it over with my microfiber cloth here. That just removes any of the fine dust that might be left. And then you've got a really, really beautiful gilded flaked stenciled background. So doesn't that look stunning? I absolutely love the reveal with the gilding flakes. You put it on and it looks like a hot mess. And then once you've got it all off, um, it just really makes the image just pop. You can see where the um, lines are from the stencil butter or the gel medium, sorry. Uh, so that's what I mean by it will keep any kind of raised areas uh, from the palette knife. So you want to get it as smooth as possible unless you want that textured look. And of course, both are absolutely fine. So I've trimmed it down to five and a half inches squared and I've got a shop bought six by six card blank 
And I'm going to attach that down. But first of all, I want to add my sentiment on a strip of vellum. I really don't want to cover up that gorgeous background that we've created. And so I've got a little strip of vellum here. It's just over an inch wide and I'm going to heat emboss on it. So I'm just using my anti-static powder bag on a piece of black and a piece of vellum. And I'm going to stamp the word anniversary on the vellum. This is a Crafters Companion a Happy Anniversary stamp set. I'll leave all the products that I've used today in the description box below as always. Uh, so if there's anything you want to have a look at, check out the list down there. But I'm just using my Wow Embossing Ink Pad here and I'm going to be using the Wow Polished Gold Embossing Powder, which is absolutely stunning. I'm going to stamp a little sub sentiment on the black cardstock and I want that on your sentiment. So it's going to say on your anniversary. That stamp set is the Ulta New um, Engagement Wishes stamp set, I believe. Uh, so I just wanted that little sub sentiment from that set. So again, I'm just using a scrap of copy paper just to do my embossing powder on and then I can put the excess back in the pot. I'm just going to take a little paintbrush and just get off any little areas that I've missed where I don't want the powder to get heat set. You can put the excess back in the pot and then I'm just going to heat set those two sentiments there using my heat tool on the hottest setting. And of course, when you're working on a glass mat, you can heat uh, set directly on top of that so you haven't got to worry about that and then look at the shine on that it's absolutely beautiful I really love the polished gold embossing powder so yeah I decide that I'm going to add the vellum on a slant today which is something a little bit different and I'm just using my mini Tim Holtz trimmer just to trim down that sub sentiment there this is something again I always reach for I'm pretty rubbish at cutting in a straight line with scissors so having a mini trimmer is great and I do find that I use it all the time I'm just going to add some double-sided adhesive tape on the back of the card there. Um, this is some uh, adhesive tape from Craft Stash, and I'm just going to attach that to the vellum, just making sure that it will hold the vellum in place uh, and making sure that I'm happy with the placement on the front. I'm going to add a little bit of foam tape behind the sub-sentiment, and I'm going to actually place that on the front of the card straight, but we'll come to that in a minute. So just add a little bit of foam tape there. Uh, I'm going to add some liquid glue all over the back of this card panel, uh, I'm using Cosmic Shimmer Liquid Glue today. This is the quick grab glue that's in that little mini bottle. And then once I've layered that down onto my card base and the border's nice and even, I can go ahead and remove the backing tape on that foam and just place that down nice and straight on my card. I'm going to add a few little gold flat back pearls to this as well today. So I've just put in my bead storage. This is the Bloom storage from We Are Memory Keepers. I absolutely love it. It's a great way of storing all those little gems. And once I've stuck those down, that is the finished card for today. So thank you so much for joining me. I really hope it's given you some inspiration of ways you can use Gildan Flakes with your stencils. As always, if you've enjoyed this tutorial, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, then please consider subscribing. And I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care.